this is uh, the landscape that I operate in. It's very noisy up here, and I'm sorry, but there's, it's always noisy up here because of the wind and the flatness of the land. Because uh, the wind carries the slightest noise right up here for some reason. There's a lawnmower way down there. You can probably hear it as though it's next to you, or at least the wind. <laughs> um, here's the landscape. Perhaps a lack thereof is more apt. I uh, am atop an artificial hill that was uh, essentially a pile of garbage that they turned into a park. Uh, it's the highest sort of point of land in this vicinity. Not really land, it's just landfill. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, there's grass growing on it and everything. But this, the very height of this artificial hill sort of betrays the actual nature of the topography where I live. Um, the city goes out to a place called the Perimeter Highway, about three miles that way. Beyond that is the Great Plains. <laughs> That's, uh, I'm pointing north, but uh, just keeps going, uh, seemingly forever. You don't seem to ever get anywhere when you're driving across the plains. Just endless flatness. Um, conference report uh, did a very eloquent video about how nice and varied the English countryside is. And I sort of was fascinated to contrast that with just how featureless uh, the, um, the countryside is around where I live. This, you can drive for literally days without the see, noting a significant change uh, in the uh, topography. You don't even get a sense of movement. One place is just the same as another. I'm reminded of a scene in Dr. Zhivago when there was a train going across the, the great steppe in uh, western Russia. Uh, the train stopped and, and he said that they suddenly had invented a place. Because the train stopped, everybody got in, put down picnic, uh, picnic stuff and had a little picnic on the open step, and suddenly they had invented a place where there was no place before. That's what you got to do here. If, uh, if the English countryside, or I guess if civilization in general, is something, then that, beyond the highway there, is nothing. <laughs> um, that's the void. Um, great nothingness of the prairie. Um, the people that evolved here, uh, I've studied in a sort of an amateurish kind of way. They fascinate me. They fascinate me, more, fascinate me more than I can possibly explain. And one of the things that I've sort of often wondered about is maybe their mindset is a adaptation to that void out there. Um, the fact that really there is nothing. There's no variation, except for year to year. Um, how do you adapt to the fact that there's just nothing? <laughs> um, how do you learn to live with that? Well, to us, it looks like a profound apathy. To them, it's just a consciousness that there kind of is nothing to think about. Um, and that interests me no end. Um, the German army in the Second World War in Russia was up to no good. <clears throat> but I often wonder at what it must have been like to be one of those German soldiers who had happened into Russia to take it over, boot off or exterminate the Russians and the other inhabitants and turn it into a bigger part of Germany. And one of the main themes of that is just how it affected the psychology of the German soldiers. A lot of them had mental breakdowns, they became extremely depressed, disconsolate, uh, they simply couldn't handle that void. Um, their morale suffered horribly. And just add to that the clouds of mosquitoes in the summer and the, um, literally clouds. <laughs> I've experienced that. And um, 50 degrees below zero in the winter. And a population that seems to be apathetic to a medieval extent. That's got to wear you down. Um... But you can obviously adapt to the void. You can adapt to it. Um, the very fact that the Germans believed that the Russians had somehow mastered some skill that enabled them 
to function and function well in that void shows that it's possible. The, the native people seem to have evolved over the last 20 centuries. Um, no. <laughs> 200 centuries, maybe. Um, a means, a mindset to overcome the horror vacui, horror vacui, the, uh, the fear of the void. <laughs> you, uh, I think that if you overcome that, the fear of the void, you've pretty much got this life thing licked. <laughs> Thanks, Fred.